Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and a very warm welcome to Government House Yarralumla. Dawa Nuna, Dawa Nunawal. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet, the Ngunnawal people, and pay my respects to their elders, past and present, emerging leaders, and all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders gathered here today. My name is Paul Singer and I'm the Governor-General's Official Secretary. And as this badge signifies with its cross quills, I'm also the Secretary of the Order of Australia, whose council recommends appointments and awards in the Order's General Division to the Governor-General, who is Chancellor of the Order of Australia and Principal Companion of the Order. I am also the Secretary to the Australian Bravery Decorations Council, the body which makes recommendations to the Governor-General for bravery awards. Before we start this afternoon's ceremony, I'd like to acknowledge among our distinguished guests, Rear Admiral Wendy Malcolm, representing the Chief of Navy, Brigadier Todd Ashurst, representing the Chief of Army, Air Vice Marshal Catherine Roberts, representing the Chief of Air Force, Mr Richard Bartlett, representing the Australian Public Service Commissioner, Mr Ray Johnson, representing the Australian Federal Police Commissioner, Chief Officer Geoffrey Butler, representing the Emergency Services Commissioner, Mr Michael Crane, Chair of Order of Australia Association ACT branch, and Mr Mark Hoskinson, representing the National President of the Australian Bravery Association. Ladies and gentlemen, the Australian Honours System provides a wonderful mechanism through which we as a nation can recognise and celebrate ordinary people who do extraordinary things. Since its inception in 1975, almost 400,000 people have been recognised for their meritorious, bravery, military or national service. The Order of Australia is the principal means of recognising outstanding service and it is important to note that nominations can come from all areas of the community. Anyone can nominate. Today is a special day, not only for the recipients, but also for their families, friends and communities. It is a day when we celebrate a diverse range of impressive achievements and service. As staff at Government House, my colleagues and I are privileged to play a small part in the recognition and celebration of that achievement. I hope we can help make today an occasion you'll all recall with some pride for a long time to come. Shortly, I'll invite you to stand as Your Excellency the Governor-General, Mrs Hurley, enter the room. Please remain standing and join in the singing of the first verse of the Australian National Anthem. The investiture will then begin and proceed in the order listed in your programs. After I read their names and citations, the recipients will enter the room from the doorway on my right and after they've been invested, will leave by the centre aisle to take their seats at the back of the room. At this point, you may like to show your appreciation with a short applause as each recipient leaves the room. At the conclusion of the investiture ceremony, the Governor-General will say a few words. He'll then leave the room and I'll invite recipients to join their excellencies for a formal photograph on the state entrance of Government House. To assist recipients in making their way to the state entrance, could I please ask that you remain in the room for a brief period before proceeding to the dining room where refreshments will be served. Their Excellencies and the recipients will then join you after the photographs have been taken. Please relax and enjoy this very special occasion. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of Her Excellencies, the Governor-General of the Commonwealth of Australia and Mrs Hurley, and for the singing of the Australian National Anthem.
Thank you. Please be seated. Well, ladies and gentlemen, could I add Linda and my well, welcome to you all to Government House Yarralumla uh, this afternoon for a very special moment in the lives of the group of recipients sitting in the back there, probably a bit nervous and apprehensive, as are some down the front, I can see. But again, welcome. You might notice that there is a degree of ceremony and pomp about the day, and that certainly should be the case, because this is a special occasion in the life of our country, where we recognise service and contribution to our country by our fellow citizens. But please, relax. This is a, an Australian government house. <laughs> so you may smile, uh, you may applaud at the appropriate time, uh, but we want to make this a special day, as I say, so it should. We're going to recognise what makes the richness of spirit of Australia so evident around the world. We're going to recognise your fellow citizens who have contributed to local community, national institutions, our international life in a way that has drawn the attention of their peers. And the beauty of the system, our honour system, in Australia is that it's a bottom-up system. This is not a system where someone high above in the elite reaches down and says, oh, that person's doing well, I'll give them a medal. This is our system where people in their communities look around and say, that person needs to be recognised. I think that's a strength. But as you're watching today, I'm going to give you some homework, so bear that thought in mind. So when we conclude and I speak a few more words at the end, your homework will be issued. <laughs> the rest of us now, let's enjoy the occasion, uh, celebrate these magnificent people and their achievement, uh, marvel in what it is to be an Australian and be thankful for their work. Thank you. Your Excellency, to be presented with the insignia of her appointment as a companion in the General Division, Ms Sharon Burrow, for eminent service to industrial relations at the national and international level, to social equity and as a champion of human rights in developing countries. Ms Burrow's inspired leadership of the Australian Trade Union Movement has propelled her into a position of authority in global industrial relations as the General Secretary of the International Trade Union Confederation since 2010. She is an unwavering and fierce advocate for the interests of working men and women in 2000. Prior to her international role, she became only the second woman to be elected President of the Australian Council of Trade Unions. Prior to this appointment, she served as the President of the Australian Education Union between 1993 and 2000. She is an unwavering advocate of human rights in developing countries and is currently president of the International Centre for Trade Union Rights. Her integrity, energy and relentless pursuit of enhanced employment conditions has helped thousands of workers receive what they are entitled to. Her passionate advocacy was instrumental in the push to have paid maternity leave in Australia extended to 18 weeks. Ms Burrow's work with world leaders and international organisations has ensured those who cannot be heard are given a voice. Ms Sharon Burrow appointed a companion of the order. Appointed a companion in the General Division, the Honourable Justice Geoffrey Nettle, for eminent service to the judiciary and to the law, to criminal and civil appeals reform, to legal education and to professional standards. Justice Nettle's attention to detail, intense concentration, enormous energy 
and capacity for hard work make him one of our finest jurists. He's a force to be reckoned with, but he's also a person of deep empathy and compassion. Before becoming a judge, he had a foundation role in the continuing legal education program of the Victorian Bar. During this time, his robust leadership of Victoria's mandatory continuing legal education program was highly commendable. He was also chairman of the Deakin University Law School Faculty Advisory Board from 2002 until 2007. He was appointed to the Supreme Court of Victoria in 2002 and predominantly served as a judge of appeal. He was a major contributor to reforms in both the criminal and civil appeal processes. This resulted in a clearance of that court's backlog and its efficient functioning since the reforms commenced. Justice Nettle's elevation to the High Court in 2015 was not only well merited, but widely applauded. Today, we recognise his eminent contribution to our nation and to our legal and judicial system. The Honourable Justice Geoffrey Nettle appointed a companion of the order. Appointed an officer in the General Division, Mr Simon Lewis. For distinguished service to public administration in a range of portfolio areas and to transformational change and organisational design. Mr Lewis has made an outstanding contribution to the Australian Public Service for over 40 years. During the period 1990 to 2010, he held a variety of responsibilities within the Department of Finance and Administration, most significant of which was his contribution to the asset management group across a range of high profile asset sales and the government's privatisation program. As Deputy Secretary Defence Support, he was a highly valued member of the Defence Leadership Team and he played a major role in the management and reform of the Defence property and corporate areas. Finally, as Secretary of the Department of Veterans Affairs, Mr Lewis oversaw events to commemorate the centenary of the ANZAC from 2014 until 2018. His leadership, his generosity in contributing to whole of government challenges and his dedication to achieving the best outcomes for our veterans is to be highly commended. Mr Simon Lewis appointed an officer of the order. Appointed an officer in the General Division, the Honourable Margaret Stone. For distinguished service to public administration, particularly to national security, to the judiciary and to legal education. Ms Stone was a highly respected and eminent member of the Federal Court from 2000 until 2012. And prior to her appointment to the Federal Court, she was an additional judge of the ACT Supreme Court. She's also made a valued contribution to academia and the advancement of the legal profession through the University of New South Wales Law School. In 2007, she was recognised as a fellow of the Australian Academy of Law. Her appointment as Inspector General of Intelligence and Security in 2015 was very well received, bringing her legal acumen and forensic insight to bear in her oversight of the Australian intelligence community. Ms Stone's award is fitting recognition of the unique value of her service and also of the extraordinary level of self-sacrifice, intellectual rigour and integrity she has displayed in serving our nation. The Honourable Margaret Stone appointed an Officer of the Order.
appointed a member in the General Division, Emeritus Professor Neville Exon, for significant service to marine geology and to higher education. Professor Exon's dedication to the marine geoscience community is vast. After a successful career as a research scientist, he retired from Geoscience Australia and moved to the Australian National University in 2005, where he took up a professorial position in 2008. As a professor at the ANU Research School of Earth Sciences, his technical knowledge, reputation, diplomacy and vision have earned him a well-deserved international reputation. His research and leadership in studying the effects of climate change on our oceans and the mechanisms of plate tectonics are both influential and globally significant. Professor Exxon has contributed enormously, not only to supporting and shaping Australian government policy, but also to the Australian Earth and Marine Sciences. He is a very worthy recipient. Professor Neville Exxon appointed a member of the order. Appointed a member in the General Division, Ms Daryl Carp, for significant service to the arts, particularly to the museum and gallery sector. Ms Carp has provided a remarkable series of exhibitions and events and developed a significant vision for the future of the Museum of Australian Democracy at Old Parliament House over the last five years. She's brought to the museum more than 20 years of experience as a senior leader across prominent broadcast and digital media organisations, including SBS, the ABC and the Australian Children's Television Foundation. These roles culminated in her appointment as the Chief Executive Officer of Film Australia between 2004 and 2008. In this role, she placed Australian culture on the international stage and dramatically improved funding opportunities for Australian filmmakers. In all endeavours, Ms Carp has shown a highly developed commitment to public service and to the importance of information and communication. Her appointment in 2017 as the Chair of the Council of Australasian Museum Directors and her reappointment in 2018 as Chief Executive Officer of the Museum of Australian Democracy is testament to her outstanding contribution to Australia's national identity. Ms Daryl Carp appointed a member of the Order. appointed a member in the General Division, Mr Warren King, for significant service to business, particularly in the area of defence industry capability. Mr King is a highly respected leader and a passionate advocate for Australian industry. He's one of our most esteemed defence acquisition policy advisors and his expertise is sought by politicians, government agencies and private enterprises. His appointment in 2016 as Chair of Navanti Australia shows how valuable his contribution to the Australian defence industry has been. Over his career, whether it is a member of the Royal Australian Navy or as the Chief Executive Officer of a Defence Material Organisation, his contribution has been driven by his unwavering integrity, sense of fair play and firm commitment to mentoring others. In 2015, he was recognised with the US Secretary of Defence Medal for outstanding public service. His deeply held passion for growing Australia's sovereign defence capability is most noteworthy. Mr Warren King appointed a member of the order.
appointed a member in the General Division, Dr Helen Moore, for significant service to English language education and to community music. Dr Moore's professional career as a lecturer at La Trobe University and Associate Professor of Education at the University of New South Wales and Vice President of the Australian Council of Teaching English to Speakers of Other Languages has improved the opportunities for migrants, refugees and Indigenous people. Since 2012, she has continued to work and advocate for these groups, at the same time making a major contribution to music in Canberra as a curator of lunchtime concerts at the Wesley Music Centre, a volunteer with the Canberra International Music Festival and as a member of the University of Canberra Chorale. Dr Moore's long, highly committed and dedicated service is thoroughly deserving of this recognition. Dr Helen Moore appointed a member of the order. Appointed a member in the General Division, Mr David Papps, for significant service to public administration. Mr David Papps has made a nationally significant contribution to the field of natural resource management over a career which has spanned nearly 40 years, culminating in his appointment as a Commonwealth Environmental Water Holder at the Department of Environment and Energy in 2012. He has been dedicated principally to environmental public policy, sustainable land use, urban planning and natural resource sustainability through senior appointments with the New South Wales Department of Planning, the Victorian Department of Sustainability and Environment and the ACT Department of the Environment, Climate Change, Energy and Water. Mr Papp's achievements in the new discipline of environmental water management have provided a benchmark for future development in this area. We thank him for his valuable efforts. Mr David Papps appointed a member of the order. Appointed a member in the General Division, Ms Theon Walters, for significant service to medical education and accreditation. Ms Walters has a profound understanding of the factors that contribute to the delivery of high quality education and training, having served as Chief Executive Officer of the Australian Medical Council since 1993. Her ability to navigate cultural and political complexities to advance quality improvement in medical professionals is highly regarded. In doing so, she has raised the profile of Australia as a leader in the field. As a senior advisor of the World Federation for Medical Education, Ms Walter's influence on standards of medical education has been significant on a global scale. She is a very worthy recipient. Ms Theon Walters appointed a member of the order. Awarded the medal in the General Division, Mr Mark Brandon Baker, for service to the community of Canberra. Mr Brandon Baker has made a significant contribution to the economic and regional development of the Canberra community. He is deeply committed to the Anglican Church as the Chair of the Anglican Development and Investment Corporation since 2015. To local business development as a former President and Board Member of the ACT Chamber of Commerce and Industry to youth as the chair of the ACT branch of the Duke of Edinburgh's International Award and to education as the chair of the Canberra Grammar School. Mr Brandon Baker's 
is a pillar of the community and his dedication to the region is legendary. Mr Mark Brandenbaker awarded the Medal of the Order. Awarded the medal in the General Division, Mr Peter Colon, for service to veterans and their families. Mr Colon is an active volunteer with community ex-service organisations as well as the local rural fire service. He uses his consummate trade skills and committee experience to give leadership and support to the Royal Australian Air Force Association as Treasurer of the 4th-5th Squadron Branch and to the Vietnam Veterans Community of the ACT. He has served as a volunteer firefighter with the Womboyne Brigade of the New South Wales Rural Fire Service since 1998, where he makes an enduring and positive impression on all who encounter him. Mr Colern's can-do attitude and passion for helping others is most worthy. Mr Peter Colern awarded the Medal of the Order. Awarded the medal in the General Division, Mr Peter Funnell, for service to hockey. Mr Funnell has been a significant figure within the hockey community of the Australian Capital Territory. He has coached a range of teams including women's first grade, under 18 junior girls and all grades of men, women and juniors since 1990. His contributions to the Central Hockey Club date back as far as 1966 as a player and an umpire. Throughout his service, both as an athlete and coach, he has modelled skills and behaviours for all members of the ages who continue to benefit from his knowledge and support. Mr Funnell has also established a reputation as a dedicated and committed business leader. He has personally overseen and built an entertainment management company and he uses his business acumen and contacts to support the community through sponsorship of entertainment for fundraising events. Mr Peter Funnell, awarded the Medal of the Order. Awarded the medal in the General Division, Mrs Elaine Heskett, for service to the community through a range of roles. Mrs Heskett is a committed volunteer to both Guide Dogs New South Wales and the ACT, and to the Country Women's Association as Treasurer of the Maria Branch. In the face of personal adversity, she took on the role of Public Relations and Motivational Speaker for Guide Dogs New South Wales ACT. Led by her passion for improving the lives of others, she now raises awareness by sharing her own story. She's visited schools, clubs and other community groups to talk about how she manages her life after losing her vision and the many different ways anyone with vision impairment can live an active and independent life. Mrs Heskett's dedication and tenacity is an inspiration to us all and we thank her for her service. Mrs Elaine Heskett awarded the medal of the order. Thank you. 
awarded the medal in the general division, Mrs Joyce Hiles, for service to the community of Bungendore and Queanbeyan. Mrs Hiles has been a volunteer who has provided countless hours to assist those in her local district. She's been a member of the Bungendore branch of the Country Women's Association since the 1950s and is well regarded for her valued contribution. She was a member of branch and state choirs and worked to develop the musical side of the association, travelling around much of New South Wales to attend choral competitions as well as other association functions. She's also been a member of the Red Cross Association since childhood and led the Girl Guides in Queanbeyan in the early 1970s. Mrs Hiles has given back to her community throughout her life, giving proof that one person can make a positive difference. Mrs Joyce Hiles awarded the Medal of the Order. Awarded the medal in the General Division, Mrs. Mrs. Judith McNay, for service to veterans and their families. Mrs. McNay has been a long-standing member of the ACT section of the Naval Association of Australia, particularly active in fundraising events. She was awarded honorary life membership of the association in appreciation for her outstanding service in 2005. She has provided tireless and heartening service to veterans and their families through the association and has also been a conscientious volunteer of the Canberra Auxiliary Hospital since 2006. During that time, she's been a volunteer with the patient and staff library, taking the library trolley to the ward areas and visiting each patient. Mrs McNay sets an inspiring example for us all. Mrs Judith McNay awarded the Medal of the Order. Awarded the medal in the General Division, Mr Gregor Milson, for service to people with a disability. Mr Milson has shown initiative and compassion in his efforts to assist those with spinal cord injury through the establishment of the Sargood Centre and through service as the current co-chairman and former secretary. He has created a space where those undergoing rehabilitation can obtain information, support and ultimately regain their independence. His skills as a successful civil engineer were evident in coordinating the various inputs and needs of stakeholders over the two and a half year construction and fit out period, culminating in a magnificent world first resort facility. Mr Milson's contributions cannot be underestimated and today he receives our deepest gratitude. Mr Gregor Milson awarded the Medal of the Order. Awarded the medal in the General Division, Dr Krishna Nadampali, for service to multiculturalism in the Australian Capital Territory. Dr Nadampali has made it his duty to support the multicultural community within the Canberra region, particularly as the former President and Secretary 
of the Federation of Indian Associations of the Australian Capital Territory. He has proven himself to be a dedicated and talented leader in many local organisations. He has held executive roles in the Telugu community at both the local and national levels and has extended his community involvement to organisations supporting multiculturalism, language, art and wellbeing. Dr Nadampali's passion for mutual understanding and promotion of cultural diversity is to be applauded. Dr Krishna Nadampali awarded the medal of the order. Awarded the medal in the General Division, Mr. Jose Roses, for service to Karate. Mr. Roses has dedicated over four decades of his life to the instruction and preservation of Okinawan Gojuru Karate. Since starting as a martial arts instructor in 1975, his tireless contributions have supported and encouraged countless people of all ages to engage in the martial arts, to appreciate their heritage and practice, and to live out their philosophy. His honorary title of Sensei has become his permanent name amongst all those who follow his shining example. Millions of people worldwide practice karate, but very few can ever hope to achieve the level of mastery and respect achieved by Mr. Roses. He is one of only 17 people in the 39 history, 39 year history of the International Okinawan Gojuru Karate Do Federation to successfully reach seventh dan. Mr. Roses has for years shared his expertise and generosity across the country and today has earned our gratitude. Mr. Jose Roses awarded the Medal of the Order. Awarded the medal in the General Division, Mr Richard Stone, for service to veterans and their families. Mr Stone has been a driving force behind supporting veterans in the community through his involvement in various veterans associations. He was instrumental in establishing the Veterans Support Centre in Queanbeyan in 2001, a centre which provides assistance in navigating complex issues following service. His own service included 23 years as a member of the Royal Australian Air Force and he's become a valued contributor to the Queanbeyan sub-branch of the Return and Services League of Australia. Mr Stone is a great example of someone giving back to their community. Mr Richard Stone awarded the Medal of the Order. Awarded the medal in the General Division, the late Mr Robert Thurling, to be accepted by his widow, Mrs Valerie Thurling, for service to the community of Goulburn. Mr Thurling was a dedicated, conscientious and passionate volunteer. He was a long-serving member of the Mary Queen of Apostles Catholic Parish Council and was a founding member of the Goulburn Patient Transport Unit in 1999 and a volunteer driver up to 2010. He was also a long-term volunteer of the St Vincent de Paul Society, having joined in 1963. Mr Thurling was a generous and compassionate man, and we honour his lifetime of commitment. Mrs Valerie, Valerie Thurling accepts the award of the Medal of the Order of Australia on behalf of her late husband, Mr Robert Thurling.
awarded the medal in the general division, Dr. Gordon White, for service to medicine and particularly sexual health. Dr. White has brought high level skill and innovative planning to the complexities of Indigenous health and sexually transmitted infections. He is a pioneer in the field of sexual health in Australia. He founded the Canberra Sexual Health Centre in 1979 and is a founding fellow of the Australasian chapter of sexual health medicine at the Royal Australian College of Physicians. He has trained many registrars who have gone on to become experts in the field or run other clinics in Australia. Dr. White has substantially contributed to improving the health and well-being of individuals and to the safer, stronger ACT community. Dr. Gordon White awarded the Medal of the Order. Awarded the medal in the military division, Wing Commander Geoffrey Howard. For meritorious service in airfield engineering and air base recovery for the Australian Defence Force. Wing Commander Howard was commissioned into the Royal Australian Air Force as an airfield engineering officer in 1996, attaining his current rank in 2015. He served in a range of staff, command and joint operational units and has significantly enhanced airfield engineering and air base recovery tactics, techniques and procedures in the Australian Defence Force. His role saw him design all airfield engineering training and delivery, produce a superior air base recovery concept and secure outstanding alliance outcomes under the Enhanced Air Cooperation Program. Wing Commander Howard has brought great credit upon himself and the Royal Australian Air Force. Wing Commander Geoffrey Howard awarded the Medal of the Order. We move now to the Distinguished Service Decorations. Awarded the Distinguished Service Medal, Colonel Mark Ascoff, for distinguished leadership in warlike operations as the commander of the Kabul Garrison Command Advisory Team and senior mentor to the Kabul Garrison Commander whilst deployed on Operation High Road in Afghanistan from June 2017 to February 2018. Colonel Ascoff's leadership and mentorship skills have elicited the very best from his Afghan partners and made an exceptional contribution to the successful performance of the Kabul Garrison Command and Advisory Team. He assisted the Three Star Joint Headquarters in the planning and execution of interagency security operations. He was instrumental in the Kabul Garrison Command's many successes in 2017, including the planning and execution of multi-agency security operations for major international and regional events. His efforts and perseverance to improve the performance of a command drew high praise from British and Turkish commanders. Colonel Ascoff's efforts have led to enhanced physical security throughout the Kabul capital precinct, directly protecting all coalition forces and the general population. His contribution reflects the very best of our army and the defence force. Colonel Mark Ascoff awarded the Distinguished Service Medal. Awarded the Commendation for Distinguished Service, Major Timothy Hurley.
for distinguished performance of duties in warlike operations as a squadron commander in Task Group Taji 6, supporting the Iraqi Army Non-Commissioned Officer Academy from New November 2017 to May 2018. Major Hurley's Integrated Anzac Training Squadron was tasked to partner with the Iraqi Army Officer Academy. The assimilation of the culture and language of the Iraqi Army enabled him to build the trust and confidence necessary to accelerate the progression of Iraqi-led advanced combat training. This trust underpinned his ability to foster the innovation that would enable him to accelerate the Academy's capacity to conduct more advanced training. His leadership of Australian and New Zealand trainers set a new benchmark for building Iraqi instructor capacity. Major Hurley's achievements made a lasting contribution to Iraqi Army training institutions and enhanced Australia's reputation in the region. Major Timothy Hurley awarded the Commendation for Distinguished Service. Awarded the Commendation for Distinguished Service, Major David Phillips, for distinguished performance of duties in warlike operations as the Plans Fusion Officer for Information Operations within the Information Operation Directorate of Combined Joint Task Force Operation Inherent Resolve in Kuwait from August 2017 to February 2018. Major Phillips was vital in developing processes for the planning and execution of information operations across the Middle East. His principal contribution was developing the assessment mechanism for clearly defining the progress of the coalition campaign plan towards discrediting the Daesh narrative. His work contributed to the operational success in liberating large areas of Iraq and Syria from brutal occupation. Accurately measuring the coalition's progress in this vital area is now performed so well, it is shared with external agencies. Major Phillips' performance brought credit upon himself and the Australian Army and is in keeping with the finest traditions of the Australian Defence Force. Major David Phillips awarded the Commendation for Distinguished Service. We move now to the Conspicuous Service Decorations. Awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross, Captain Dugald Clallan, for outstanding achievement, leadership and tactical employment while in command of HMAS Warramunga, supporting Operation Manitow during the period November 2017 to June 2018. Captain Clallan demonstrated drive, commitment and determination to achieve operational outcomes as a commanding officer of HMAS Warramunga. This included a record seizure of illicit narcotics with a street value of $2.17 billion. Overall, the operation included 13 successful narcotic seizures, capturing a total of 2,000 kilograms of heroin and 34,500 kilograms of hashish. In any operational environment, the test of leadership is no greater than in a crisis and his outstanding leadership was tested in returning Warramunga to operational capability within 24 hours after the total loss of its combat system. Captain Clellan exemplifies the calibre of the men and women that serve in Australia's Defence Force. Captain Dugold Clellan awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross.
Awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross, Captain James Lybrand, for outstanding achievement as Director Submarine Operations and Commander Task Group 627 in the planning and execution of submarine operations from September 2014 to August 2018. Captain Lybrand joined the Royal Australian Navy in 1990 as an aviation technician before receiving his commission in 1993 and subsequently training as a maritime warfare officer. He joined Maritime Operations Branch as a Director of Submarine Operations and Task Group Commander and was promoted to Captain in 2016. He's been instrumental in leading the planning and execution of complex submarine theatre deployments. His pivotal role in the delivery of a highly successful submarine operational program has improved Allied understanding of the regional undersea environment and greatly enhanced Australia's contribution to this area. Captain Lybrand's skill and leadership has assured the effective deployment of our submarines. Captain James Lybrand awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross. Awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross, Commander Victor Pilicic, for outstanding achievement as Commanding Officer HMAS Coonawarra and Senior Australian Defence Force Officer Larrakea Defence Precinct. Commander Pilicic has deployed on five operations since joining the Royal Australian Navy in 1987. He was promoted to Commander in 2011 and assumed command of HMAS Coonawarra in 2016. He has achieved outstanding results through his leadership supporting patrol boats, their capability and their crews. His service was also key in achieving many capability and lifestyle improvements in the Joint Larrakea Defence Precinct. Commander Pilicic's performance has been of the highest order and in keeping with the finest traditions of the Royal Australian Navy and the Australian Defence Force. Commander Victor Pilicic awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross. Awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross, Lieutenant Colonel Nicholas Brown, for outstanding service as Staff Officer Grade 1 Strategic Engagements, Australian Army Research Centre. <laughs> Colonel Brown has served with distinction over numerous assignments as an officer in the Royal Australian Engineers, including operational service in Afghanistan. He was promoted to Lieutenant Colonel in 2017. His pursuit of excellence in the design, coordination and management of the Land Forces 2018 conference demonstrably elevated the forum's strategic significance. His capacity to anticipate strategic reorientation and his personal orchestration of over 20 combined defence events within a highly demanding portfolio is to be applauded. Colonel Brown has brought great credit on himself and on the Australian Defence Force. Lieutenant Colonel Nicholas Brown awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross. Awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross, Lieutenant Colonel Edward Stokes, for outstanding achievement and devotion to duty as the Staff Officer Grade 2 Logistics, Headquarters 1st Brigade. Colonel Stokes's leadership and breadth of vision consistently delivered outstanding results in implementing Army level reform and restructuring initiatives with the 1st Brigade. He enlisted into the Australian Army in 1995 and was promoted to Major in January 2013. 
He was then posted to Headquarters 1st Brigade as a Staff Officer Grade 2 Logistics in September 2016. Colonel Stokes consistently harnessed the widest array of resources to effectively and efficiently relocate the 1st Armoured Regiment from Darwin to Adelaide and to deliver structural and procedural changes associated with the Combat Brigade restructure. His efforts saved defence over $710,000 in contracted lift costs, plus an estimated $1.2 million saving in distribution costs. Colonel Stokes has, through mentoring and by example, developed our Army's next generation of logistics leaders. Lieutenant Colonel Edward Stokes awarded the Conspicuous Service Cross. Awarded the Conspicuous Service Medal, Commander Nicholas Field, for meritorious achievement in the field of Navy Cyber. Commander Field joined the Royal Australian Navy in 1995 and received his commission in 1998. He transferred to the Intelligence Officer Work Group in 2005 and subsequently served in a number of shore-based intelligence appointments, including operational postings in the Middle East. He was promoted to Commander in July 2018. His drive and professionalism delivered a significant enhancement to Australia's Navy through the establishment of a cyber capability. His efforts in the area of cyber policy, system assessment and training provided the Navy a capability to protect its ships, systems and people from malignant cyber threats. Commander Field's development of these new processes will assure that systems provide the confidentiality, integrity and availability of information required for the safe and successful conduct of future naval missions. Commander Nicholas Field awarded the Conspicuous Service Medal. Awarded the Conspicuous Service Medal, Lieutenant Commander Jasmine Lau Smith, for meritorious devotion to duty in the field of submarine operations intelligence. Lieutenant Commander Lau Smith was deployed to the Middle East Area of Operations as an intelligence officer in 2015. She joined submarine operations in 2016 and performed her role in an exemplary manner. Her tenure as submarine operations intelligence officer can be characterised as being at the peak of submarine operating intensity for many years. She demonstrated outstanding skill in acquitting her responsibilities for production and planning of submarine operations and activities throughout the region. Lieutenant Commander Lau Smith's professionalism resulted in the execution of highly effective submarine operational employment and reflects the finest traditions of Australia's Navy. Lieutenant Commander Jasmine Lau Smith awarded the Conspicuous Service Medal. Awarded the Conspicuous Service Medal, Major Pierre Pell, for meritorious achievement as the Joint Task Group 629 Liaison Officer to the Armed Forces of the Philippines during Operation Augury Philippines. Major Pell initially served for 24 years in the Armed Forces of the Philippines before commissioning into the Australian Army in 2008. One of his most notable contributions has been to Operation Augury Philippines where he improved the counter-terrorism capabilities of their armed forces. Major Pell's achievements have significantly strengthened Australia's relationship with the Philippines. He enabled the planning of counter-terrorism training for the armed forces of the Philippines 
and in a highly competitive geopolitical environment, enhance the reputation of our Defence Force as a regional security partner. Major Pierre Pell awarded the Conspicuous Service Medal. We move now to the Meritorious Service Awards. Awarded the Public Service Medal, Mr Ryan Fernando, for outstanding public service through improving the diagnosis and treatment of sleep apnea. Mr Fernando is regarded as a poly ex policy expert in thoracic and sleep medicine. After service with the Department of Social Services and an earlier period with the Health Department, since 2016 he has provided medical specialist services for the Department of Health. His close collaboration with clinical experts and patient groups saw him play a critical role in the reform of Medicare funding and in 2017, more than 167,000 patients received a Medicare funded sleep study. Mr Fernando's commitment and ability to build and maintain effective relationships with the medical profession achieve consensus has helped improve the lives of many Australians. Mr Ryan Fernando, awarded the Public Service Medal. Awarded the Public Service Medal, Mrs Sarah Hitchcock, for outstanding public service through the development and delivery of visitor services programs at the Australian War Memorial. Mrs Hitchcock has been the head of the Commemoration and Visitor Engagement Program at the Australian War Memorial since 2012. In 2013, she developed the last post-ceremony program and has worked with members of the Australian Defence Force who read the stories and perform the ceremonial duties at the end of each day. Featuring stories from the Boer War up until the conflict in Afghanistan, these daily ceremonies bring closure and healing to many. Her most influential work was the leadership of a visitor experience to the memorial during the centenary of the First World War commemorations. From 2014 until 2018, her management and oversight has seen almost 3.7 million visitors pass through the memorial's front gates. Mrs Hitchcock's commitment to one of Australia's most important places of memory is highly deserving of our recognition. Mrs Sarah Hitchcock awarded the Public Service Medal. Awarded the Public Service Medal, Ms Beverly Sims, for outstanding public service through the provision of executive support at the highest levels and to fostering the development of public sector executive assistance. Ms Sims has provided dedicated service throughout her long career in public administration. Since taking on the role as executive assistant to the Secretary of the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet in 2017, and in addition to her workload supporting the Secretary, Ms Sims has also been vital to the reinvigoration of the Executive Assistance Network, which now ensures regular communication, sharing and hosts a range of events across the Australian Public Service. In all her support roles, she has been vital to the effective, efficient and professional administration of the offices of the senior departmental heads in the execution of their functions. Ms Sims' endeavours are highly regarded and go above and beyond the expectation of her positions. Ms Beverly Sims awarded the Public Service Medal.
awarded the Australian Police Medal, Detective Sergeant Ronald Mellis, for distinguished service to the Australian Federal Police. Detective Sergeant Mellis commenced with the Australian Federal Police in 1984 and on completion of recruit training at the AFP College, graduated as a constable and began servicing, serving in ACT policing. He attained his detective designation in 1993 and was promoted to the rank of Sergeant in 2000. He has served with distinction for over 35 years with the Australian Federal Police. In particular, he is recognised for his achievements in the areas of criminal investigations, major crime and learning and development. He has performed a vital role of training manager for the ACT Mental Health Community Policing Initiative and provided valuable contributions to the roadside drug testing pilot program in the ACT. We are indebted to Detective Mellis for his service and his professionalism. Detective Sergeant Ronald Mellis awarded the Australian Police Medal. Awarded the Australian Fire Service Medal, Mr Robert Thatcher, for outstanding service to the New South Wales Rural Fire Service. Mr Thatcher joined the Jellet Rural Fire Brigade in 1958 and over the ensuing 60 years he has been a pivotal member of the brigade taking on several administrative and operational roles which culminated in his appointment as captain in 2000. He has been a stalwart of rural firefighting of the Sapphire Coast for over 60 years. He's demonstrated his leadership capabilities by serving in a range of positions and he's highly respected by his colleagues, peers and the area's volunteers. Additionally, he was vital to a major reform of his brigade, focusing on developing it into a modern, professional organisation that exists today, while also ensuring the values, lessons of the past are always passed down to new members. Mr Thatcher is deeply committed to ensuring the ongoing safety of the Jalak community. Mr. Robert Thatcher awarded the Australian Fire Service Medal. Awarded the Ambulance Service Medal, Ms Megan Davis, for outstanding service to the ACT Ambulance Service. Ms Davis commenced her career as an Ambulance Officer with New South Wales Ambulance Service prior to joining the ACT Ambulance Service in 2002. During her time, she has undertaken a number of roles as both an Ambulance Paramedic and an Intensive Care par Paramedic. Her broad and extensive experience as a frontline clinician resulted in her being the first officer to fill the role of quality and patient safety officer. Ms Davis has been a driving force in the development and implementation of safety initiatives across a wide range of clinical settings for the ACT Ambulance Service, thereby improving the quality and delivery of care by our first responders. Ms Megan Davis awarded the Ambulance Service Medal. We now come to the Australian Bravery Decorations. These awards honour those who, without pause, have placed the safety and lives of others before their own. They have selfishly braved the most dangerous conditions and we are a stronger and safer nation because of them. All nominations are considered by the Australian Bravery Decorations Council 
an independent group of 16 members who make recommendations to the Governor-General. Awarded the Group Bravery Citation, Mr David Affalay, Senior Constable Wayne Belitho, Senior Constable Michael Hartas, Mr Gary McKegney, Mr Kevin Martin, and Mr Paul Thompson. In the early hours of the 2nd of August 2010, two State Emergency Service volunteers, three New South Wales police officers and two New South Wales paramedics went to the rescue of two people trapped in a blizzard in Kosciuszko National Park in New South Wales. At about 1am, the team was tasked with searching for the two cross-country skiers who were a blizzard near Blue Lake. The skiers, who were experienced, had managed to use a mobile phone to make an emergency call to police. Nearly a metre of snow had fallen in the previous 36 hours and wind gusts at the time were over 100 kilometres per hour. The rescue team set out to search for the skiers in an over-snow ambulance, making their way to the western side of the snowy river. Whilst two members of the team stayed with the vehicle, the other five members set out on foot in very difficult weather conditions. Temperatures at this stage were minus 10 degrees Celsius. After searching in the dark for a lengthy period of time, the missing skiers were located partially buried in the snow. They were suffering hypothermia and the team quickly helped the skiers down a steep slope to the safety of the rescue vehicle, which was then navigated through the deteriorating blizzard conditions, reaching the safety of Charlotte Pass over four hours later. For their actions, the recipients are recognised by the award of a Group Bravery Citation. Mr David Affalay. <laughs> Senior Constable Wayne Belitho. Senior Constable Michael Hartas. <laughs> Mr Gary McKegney. Mr. Kevin Martin. <laughs> and Mr. Paul Thompson.
Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the presentations this afternoon and I now invite the Governor-General to speak. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've uh, recognised each of the recipients individually. I think it would be appropriate now to recognise them as a group. Well done. <laughs> you have now seen the wide range of community commitment, uh, the nature of work, the quality of work performed by recipients. Back in your hometown, in your community, in your suburb, you know people who were doing exactly the same thing. You'll have also noticed, although our ratio of male to females across the board in the award system has increased to a nearly 40% women, we are still not where we should be. Your homework. <laughs> Go back to your communities. You know the people who are enriching the life of your community. Think about who they might be, gather referees, go to our website, nominate. It will not change without your nominations. Speak to those in your community who can assist. For the IT savvy, that's most of us below 60, I'm not in that group, uh, <laughs> you can do this online. For those who need assistance, turn around to your granddaughters, grandsons, nieces or nephews, uh, they will help you. Uh, but you know what is occurring in your community. So let's make the changes we need to make. Again, a uh, delightful way to spend an afternoon recognising outstanding Australians, uh, their commitment to our country, their commitment to community, and as you've seen, it has been over many, many decades for most of them. Thank you all, and uh, we're delighted to share the occasion with you. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, to assist with the homework that the Governor-General has just issued you with, I do encourage you to go to the Governor-General's website where you'll have access to an online nomination form. The process is very simple and our staff, of course, will be able to assist should you require. That concludes this afternoon's presentation ceremony and I now invite today's recipients to join their Excellencies for photograph on the state entrance stairs. Would you please stand for their departure? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated and shortly our staff will invite you to join their excellencies for refreshments in the dining room. Thank you and a very good afternoon. <laughs>